Yo, Elliot, I saw multiple comments from some women on your video from last week about women working from home rather than out in the marketplace. They basically asked this, how is a woman supposed to survive and support her kids if her husband dies and she doesn't have any work experience? Another woman said, not having your own income in a relationship is kind of scary. I think those are interesting questions. Thanks, bro. So I have to begin by saying that a lot of times these questions don't necessarily come from a place of true concern. They come from a place of, well, power and control. This is like the people who say, well, what about abortion in the case of rape? Not recognizing, well, you're trying to excuse abortion for entertainment, which is mostly what it is, for 0.1% of what actually is happening. There aren't, a, there isn't a whole lot of rapes going on, right? I know there are people who argue with me, but if you look at the divorce, look at the abortions, most of them are just coming from women who are living promiscuous lifestyles. They're not coming from rape victims. So to, to, to pull up, right? And this is, in, in, it's sneaky, it's insidious, and it's ingenuous to pull up the rape victim, right? And dangle her in front of you know, the, the, the person who you're making the argument with in order to excuse your sin. Well, I want to live a promiscuous lifestyle and I want to kill my baby. And you are saying that that's wrong, but what about, and then you go dig down somewhere and you pull out some poor raped woman. What about her using her? And it's the same thing. It's the same kind of question. People will go to all kinds of lengths in order to justify their sin. They will, and listen, I don't, I can't blame them because this is, this is the power that's, that is used to manipulate the way the world has unfolded, right? We have abortion now because of that 0.1% of abortions. And people will, people will take that as a legitimate reason why everybody should be allowed to kill their baby. Now you say, how is the woman supposed to survive if her husband dies? A lot of times those questions come from wanting to justify working outside the home, which I am not a fan of. My opinion is that it's better to stay home, raise your children and allow the husband. But in order to justify, people will ask questions like this. Not to say that it's not a legitimate question, but the question usually comes from a place of trying to legitimize my sin rather than true concern for the person who dies, right? If that's the case, first of all, it's her responsibility and her husband's responsibility when he's alive to get insurance. That is the first thing I did when I started earning money. I hate it. I hate the fact that I have to buy insurance. Chris Rock calls it in case of shit, right? In case something happens, right? Insurance is just, it's, it's, it's an insurance a policy against bad stuff happening. If your husband dies or if, if your husband dies and he's your source of income, he should have been putting money into insurance. If I die, my wife gets, I'm probably gonna have to increase it at some point here because she's got a bigger mortgage now. But we were living in our previous house six months ago. She had enough money coming in for my death to cover the house and to cover a year, at least a year's worth of expenses, right? Before she can get back up on her feet and figure out what she's gonna do. But I'm gonna talk a little bit about what that might look like also. Another way I want to reach this question, another angle at which I want to reach this question is, okay, so the question is, how is a woman supposed to survive with her kids if her husband dies and she doesn't have work experience? Well, how is a husband supposed to raise his children if the wife dies and he has to go to work? You're trying to avert a situation that can go any which way, right? We don't justify sin because of what could possibly happen, right? So what does that mean? So now, if, if think about me, I put myself in a situation. So my, if my wife dies, I have three daughters and a son, all still very young, and a whole lot of responsibilities that will go undone in my house if she dies. Now, does that mean that I now, before she dies, need to start thinking about having a second wife? Should I be out there kind of scouting and making sure that, uh, that another woman is going to be available for me to bring into my house when my wife dies? It's the same thing. 
for her to start thinking, oh, I should work outside of the home because my husband might die means I should start thinking about bringing a woman into my house because my wife might die. That's the line of thought. If she, it, and now I'm being facetious here, but if you have a woman or the woman that asks this question is it, it's, it's justified and her husband says, yes, I might die. You can now, you should now go work outside the home. First of all, all the responsibilities that should have been taken care of in the home is not, is, is going to go untaken care of because in case of shit, right? Not, you're not dead, but she's working outside the home just in case you die. So the children are left parentless and the, and the, and the home and the husband are not cared for, right? Because he might die. It, this doesn't make any sense. In the same regard, I start bringing a woman around here like, hey, Colleen, this is uh, Susan. And uh, I'm just going to be kind of getting to know Susan a little bit. And I want to know if she's if she can cook the way you cook and she can clean the way you clean. She can take care of the children the same way you do. And, you know, I might want to have sex when you die, too. So I'm just going to start kind of like molding and training and bringing her in here in case you die. It doesn't make any sense. It's dumb. Another woman said, not having your own income in a relationship is kind of scary. Well, yeah, everything's scary, right? Do we live our life based on fear, right? Am I going to have a backup wife because my wife might divorce me, right? It's kind of scary, right? It's kind of scary. I live in a world where 90% of divorces are initiated by women. Maybe I should have a backup plan, right? That's not a bad idea. I should have a backup plan. I should, have, I should have women in my back pocket that are available just in case my wife divorces me or she dies. Who lives that way? Nobody lives that way. There's a right way to live and you can make all the excuses that you want in order to avert that and to excuse the wrong way to live. And we know it's the wrong way because it's not working, right? It's not working out. It's not working out. Families aren't working out. And that's my number, my number one goal here it really is make families great again. So I'm not, I'm not throwing out any ideas that are against family. I'm, in fact, fighting ideas that are against the family. Everything that I propose is designed to make family better because family sucks right now. Family's destroyed right now. Family's totally denigrated, destroyed, and degenerate in our world today. Everything I assert, no matter what feminists say or if people like it or not, it's because of my love for family. My love for family says it's better for a woman to stay home. It's not my hatred for women to say, oh, but your husband might die, so you should go out and work. Here's another one. Our world has become so detached from reality, it's ridiculous. And so attached to our new Lord and Savior, the government, right? G-O-D, government of democracy. Prior to Medicare, Medicaid, uh, uh, what do they call it when they give you money? Welfare, that's what I'm talking about. Prior to welfare and all these social programs that taxpayers pay for, by the way, by the end of a barrel of a gun, because if you don't pay your taxes to do good, you'll get shot or put in jail, right? And that's, that's how much social justice is happening, right? Social justice or, 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 or what you would call um, secular social justice says the government is supposed to come and force you to give money so that we can do nice things for people or for women whose husbands have died in your situation, right? Prior to the government being our God, guess who took care of orphans and widows? Widows and orphans were always taken care of by the church. Did you know that? Did you know that the church was the first social justice warriors? They were the first social justice warriors. They're the ones that created orphanages. They're the ones that created support for widows. But that doesn't exist anymore. And I'm not saying that it even needs to be the church, but the community. Where's the community? Because we've outsourced everything to the federal government, there's no one to help you. Also, where are the grandparents? If, my, if I die, my parents... Let me put it this way. The grandparents are a backup for the parents. But most grandparents are degenerate retards also who have been flower powered 
hippies in the 60s, and most of them were divorced anyway. Like Colleen's parents. Right? My parents didn't grow up in America, so they didn't get all that flower power, hippie stuff, sexual revolution garbage. My mom was a virgin when she married my dad. I know that's neither here nor there, but the point is that in a rightly ordered society, you have family to back you up. You have community to back you up. You have the church to back you up. You don't have corporations and government. This is what you're asking when you ask that question. You're saying, do I owe my allegiance to the corporation that's going to give me a paycheck and the government that's going to take my taxes? Yes, in essence, that's what we do. Where's the family? Where's the community? Where's the church? G-O-D, government of democracy. So we've made the government and we've made the corporations and we've made Hollywood essentially because Hollywood is the one that has infiltrated our thought pattern and changed our behaviors so that we ask questions like this. Legitimate questions, but fallen questions. Questions that come from a fallen world, a fallen state, a degenerate people. If you have a rightly ordered family, rightly ordered society, that kind of question is moot. It's not a, it's not a relevant question, right? Oh, of course, if the husband dies, well, that's why you have your parents. If one of my daughters get married and they, she has children, and, and this is in the Bible too. This is, I think, is in, in Deuteronomy or Numbers. And she, her husband dies. It's my responsibility. I now then become her authority again. A do- and this is, this is for women. And I know that a lot of people aren't going to like this. I'm ranting quite a bit, but this is, this is biblical. I was reading about, learning a lot about biblical patriarchy. That's what I'm studying right now. That a young lady is the responsibility of her father until she's married, and then she becomes the responsibility of her husband. Now, I know in our, in our you know, strong, independent, I don't need no man world, which sucks and doesn't work. And it's part of the reason why everybody's depressed and taking pills. Um, but it's what we got. Uh, strong, independent woman at age 18 leaves and, and goes off to college and she's partying it up and she's, you know, living the promiscuous lifestyle. And then she gets her middle management job somewhere and she's just, she's doing it all her own. Right. Um, there are several things that are diabolical about that. I mean, where do I begin with the college and the fornication and the sex partying? or with the whole, I don't need no man attitude that even a lot of conservative fathers participate in by sending their daughters to college. I'm not saying my daughter's to college. They all participate in this, right? So if it's true that a young lady is still the responsibility of her is, is still under the responsibility of her father until she's given over to a husband who now has responsibility for her. If that husband dies, that daughter comes back home to me, right? It's now my response. My daughter, think about, I don't want to put my whole family laundry out for the whole world to see, but my sister has some problems with men. She's got two kids. And now my parents essentially take care of her kids, help her take care of her kids. They are her foundation. They're her rock for her family because my father still has responsibility for his daughter. That happens to my daughter. What am I going to do? Leave her? I'm not going to worry about her? This is why family is so important, but family is not there because people are going to listen to me and they're going to say stuff like, oh, Elliot, but my father is an alcoholic. Oh, but my parents divorced. Well, that sucks. That's why I'm speaking out against these ills, you know, just the very, just the, you can't solve the problem from the level at which it was created. And you're asking a question, how's a woman supposed to survive if her husband dies from a mindset that was created from the level at which the problem was created. These are fallen questions from a fallen person living in a fallen world with no faith and no authority and no structure and nothing sacred. This is how we've destroyed the world. This is how we've destroyed the family, right? Not having your own income in a relationship is kind of scary, faithless, sad, faithless creature. 
Not only that, not only is it sad and faithless, but it doesn't open you up to the vulnerability required for true intimacy in your relationship. We need each other. Let me put it that way. But when a woman don't need a man, she's not vulnerable to him. And when she's not vulnerable, she's not open. And when she's not open, the chemistry or the, or the polarity is off. It's good to be dependent on your husband as a wife. As a wife, it's good to be dependent on your husband, not just because of authority, right? That's not even it, but because of love. You can't love your husband to the same degree that's required. You can't respect your husband to the degree that's required if you're strong and independent. Make of it what you will, right? Make of it what you will. Say what you want about that, but the bottom line is that without vulnerability, there's lacking intimacy. Intimacy flourishes in vulnerability. You scared. Well, maybe you scared because your mama screwed up your family and your dad has screwed up your family. And you're, if your grandparents are boomers, I'm sure they screwed it up too. We're the third generation of a destroyed culture, starting at the root, starting with the family. So I know I sound like a throwback. I know I sound archaic, I guess you could say, or some people would say misogynist. But I can't help but to look at the world as it is and the conventions we take for granted and not point out the fact that it ain't working. It ain't working. Family's not working. Why? Why? Women are more strong and independent than they've ever been in the history of the world, but yet more miserable. Why is that? Why is that? And I think the tables are turning. I've been reading a lot of articles. I was reading articles, and this is why I think Gen Z is, is going to be the one that's going to see the tables turn. Not all of y'all, not all of y'all, but you're the ones that are starting to see, wait a second, what they were doing and what they've been teaching us and what the past few generations have lived through don't seem to be working. And I, I've been watching, I read this one article, or, or the way the person put it, that the new flex is to be a stay-at-home mom with a lot of kids. That's the new flex, the new flex, the new rebellion, the new counterculture is traditional culture because it's counter to the diabolical disorientation that we've been living through for the past six decades, seven decades. Well, anyway, I know I'm getting kind of emotional about this because it's one of the topics that are most, uh, <laughs> most important to me in my life and that I have most concern about because it, it has to do with our future. So anyway, that's that. That's my rant on that, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.